Hey, Lab Code Agents, it's Tristan and Nick. Again here, another webinar. Uh, I think we're bombarding people with too many webinars here. What do you think, Nick? Never. I'm tired, man. <laughs> you're, but you're eating salad. That's like that's like the essence of all the foods, man. Energy food, energy food. Come on. Where's my man? Be, I wanna be I wanna be like I wanna be like my t-shirt. I love it. I love him. I get strong. And sheer. Well, today we've got Pauline. Pauline, it's Pauline Von Fisher. Is that That's it? That's it. That's, That's correct. A beautiful last name. I love it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And today we're going to be talking to you. Work for my out desk, and I sure you do. have you have the opportunity to work with a lot of VAs, and you see the hiring process. You see it. You teach it. So it's really nice to have you on and speak about the hiring process because a lot of the times we just don't know what that is with a lot of agents just working as single agents and not knowing what to do. So we're going to talk about that. Nick, do you want to add anything before we go ahead and start and give Real it up? Quick, did you share this into lab code agents, the group? No, not yet. I'll do it right now. I'll share it onto the broker group. Well, I'm excited because tomorrow and this relates to tomorrow. Don't, don't get me wrong. Tomorrow we have a webinar with Barry and Sunit about building a team. So I feel like this is a really good segue into that. You know, Absolutely. like I was on my mother's team for 10 years, so I wasn't involved in hiring people. And now I am. So I just made a new hire. His name's Kyle. He's over here. So this webinar will really solidify whether or not Kyle will still have a job at three o'clock. <laughs> Kyle, you're still going to have a job. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's so, just let's go. Let's go. How do you put up with him, Kyle? He he he's not allowed to talk unless you ask. <laughs> oh, you do not speak unless you're supposed to. <laughs> Mistake That's number all. one. That's <laughs> <up>. <laughs> no, let's go. I'm ready. I'm excited. All right, all right, Pauline. It's up to you now. Here we go. All right, so. People come to us on a daily basis saying, hey, I need help. Okay, where do you need help? And they would say everything, right? <laughs> where do I and start? I, <laughs> and I'm all, well, you came to the right place. Now let's sort that out. What exactly does one need help in? If you can't verbalize where you need help or where you want to go, I can't bring you there. It's kind of um, a sequence of events that need to happen for every single agent to figure out, do I want growth? Do I want to create a team? Where am I going to be in my one-year, five-year, ten-year plan? So when you start to hire people, it's not so easy for agents, right? Because a lot of times they work alone. They do things by themselves. They don't know where to start in the hiring process. A lot of people will put ads out. Oh, I'll put an ad on Craigslist. Indeed, that consumes a lot of time. And yeah, that's what I did to start off here. I mm -hmm. was like, oh my gosh, what, what, I'm so overwhelmed. What do I do next? I asked so many people and, and I mean, I was getting different answers, but I finally decided to hire a transaction coordinator first. That's mm -hmm. who I hired first. What do you guys recommend to hire first? There so there's a few ways I look at it. When people come to me and say, okay, I need help. This is what I want to do. I sit there and I say, let's have an honest conversation. Where are your strengths and where are your weaknesses? So if you have a ton of paperwork just stacking up and you just truly suck at catching up on it, and that's where you see yourself spending that hour 12 to 14 of the day, you really need to evaluate where is my time best spent. Pauline, most agents suck at paperwork. It's most just, that's a fact. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a personality our, thing, right? It's just our personality as real estate, right? <laughs> oh, I'm the I am the worst at paperwork. <laughs> Tracking, we keeping suck. track of where everything is. If somebody picks up the phone and says, "Hey, where are we at in the process?" A lot of people scramble and don't know. So. You know, one of the things that stand out to me, if you don't hire an assistant, you are an assistant. And a lot of people will talk about that and, and say, okay, transaction coordination, great, that's where I'm going to start. But what else could this person do for me? A lot of times the biggest mistake people do is they'll hire a person who's capable of doing all the admin duties, 
but then expect them to be a salesperson as well, making ISA phone calls, prospecting. Ooh. And that is a you big, know, you, you, don't, know. <laughs> you don't suggest that I hire someone that is really good at admin work and then also have them make calls? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't suggest that. I'm totally against that. Um, I really tell people to really reevaluate re that decision if they want to go that direction. For us here at my outdesk, we segment the virtuals in three sections. Realistically, it's two depending on your volume. Mm -hmm. So an admin and marketing person realistically is a combined support. The differentiator in the two is where do your needs sit more. If you need someone more on the marketing side that can on occasion absorb some TC client care, that's possible. If you're heavy on the admin side and have very little social media, flyer creation, or anything like that, then you pick the strengths of someone who's capable of doing the admin duties primarily and taking marketing as a secondary. An ISA for us is a completely separate kind of person because the way we recruit and bring people on board, it's several things. Definitely experience, um, employed, they used to have to have done this job previously in some sense. I'm not speaking in real estate, but generalization, right? Okay. If someone who's been in sales and they do mass calling in their previous job and their sales converted really well, that's a good ISA. So an admin person, if they've previously been an admin, you take a look at the skills and the tasks they previously handled, then that can be a fit for what you need. Okay, so the first thing you're telling me that you do is you assess where we're where we're at as agents. All right. So mm -hmm. let's say I'm ready to hire someone. I've been in the business for let's say 10 years, but mm -hmm. it's been me. It's been me. I've worked on referrals, but now all of a sudden uh, I decided to to get Y Lopo and I'm getting so many leads from from this system and I don't know how to handle them. And I'm not that great at paperwork. So you're telling me you'd sit down with me or at least you'd hear me out and say, look, let's find out where you're at. Do you need help with paperwork to systematize that? Or do you need help with making the calls to, to those leads? Exactly. That's what I would do. And I would assess several other factors. How many transactions do you do? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what is the general volume? Where are you going to be in six months? So I have a well. question then. Yeah. Uh, one of the challenges that I had, and, and I'm sure a lot of people out there have too, is how do you how do you make a, a list of job duties? Like, how do I know what my admin's supposed to do? How do I know what my TC supposed to do? Uh, so do the great thing that we've come up with, because we've been doing this for almost 10 years now, is experience on our end as well. So we help an agent by providing them hiring guides and segmenting each position. So on the chat window, I posted a couple of links. The very last link is a download page. In there is your hiring guide and basically a job description for each position. And then keeping in mind that, hey, okay, I can do this. That's where people get stuck is, yeah, I need a TC, but what else can they do, right? And so that's where I would sit down with someone and go, okay, do you have X, Y, and Z? Are you running this? How much time do you spend doing that? And then we can build a job description based on that. Got so it. that's where people get hung up is they just panic and go, I don't know what all I want. Everything is a crawl, walk, and then run scenario. Figure out what you want, what you need, and where you're going. All right. All right. So here you put a link in. Can I just, for the go, people can I just make a comment? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned, you know, knowing your personal strengths, I mean, so true, man. Like, like Tristan was saying, most agents, well, me specifically, I'm a high, high. What? Why are you laughing? I didn't even say anything. But you said most agents and then you go specifically me. I'm like, yeah, that's so true. I mean, I am a high, I, I just want to be out in front of people. I want to be talking. I want to be setting appointments. I want to be doing that stuff. Right. And so before I had a team, I just kind of like realized and noticed myself trying to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, so yeah, it's true. Find your, find your personal strength where we go back to finding your one thing that you're good at and that you want to you know, focus on and go for it. Are you, are you shamelessly plugging the one Dude, thing? You said one thing. I was just reading it this morning. I don't know. What happened? 
Tristan just shamelessly plugged the one thing by Jay, Jay Papasan and Gary Keller. But yeah, totally true. Know your strengths. Know what you're good at. And then outsource and leverage the rest. I mean, that's the only way to, to move forward. Mm-hmm. So, Pauline, we're trying to leverage here. That's what we're trying to do by hiring. Correct. And the, the biggest challenge, I think, when we're trying to leverage is hiring. I don't know how to hire. I, I didn't go to school to, to learn how to hire. I didn't even go to school, actually, to, to learn how to do real estate. I got to spell on it, right? <laughs> and then we're learning along on the way, and there's nobody there to tell us, hey, this is how you hire. These are the things you look for. And here's here's kind of like a, a sheet. I know uh, there's a link here that you called it the myoutdesk.com forward slash LCA, the seven figures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me post that up. Hold on. Let me post that up to the webinar uh, and to the Facebook group. Hold on. That way people can take a look at that. Uh, can you tell us about that sheet, please? What is it? Yeah, so it breaks down the tasks that are involved in each position. And it gives you a bird's eye view of all the things that are non-revenue generating tasks that it should be offsetting to somebody else. And if you see on those things, you're going to sit there and go, absolutely, yes, I suck at that. And, oh, yeah, I, I use these tools. I don't need to be doing it myself. Let me transfer it over to a virtual. The, the idea here for my outdesk is a typical agent or any company, if you put an ad out, it takes you about six weeks to finally start to interview people. Okay. We do all of that. So we're cutting your hiring and recruitment process to one week by using us. Why? Because my outdesk is already experienced in recruiting, bringing them in, giving them foundational training, which is very foundational. Um, It's a basic knowledge of real estate. And then there's a second layer that once you hire this person, there's additional training that's available that you select and customize to your needs. Okay. And then um, for an ISA, I mean, it's the same thing, right? What script are you using? Where are your lead sources? How do you um, want to see the results come towards you? Okay. So let's say I don't want to hire my outdesk because, okay. I, you know, I just want to do this on my own just to test it out. And how, what, what's the first thing I look for? Where do I go hire people? Where do I go just to Craigslist? Do I do it on Indeed? Yeah, plenty. Do do? Yeah, plenty of options out there. So Indeed, Zip Recruiter, uh, Monster, Craigslist. Um, those are all great resources for bringing people in. The challenge there is you're going to get anywhere from fifty to five hundred resumes. Okay. Everybody looks good on paper if they want to. Okay. Right now you have to select who you want to interview. And when you interview them, are you asking the right questions? So, you know, are you really hitting the personality side that this person has to have in order to be a good fit for you and your That's company? That's a really good point that you make because when I, when I put up an ad, uh, Linda Maxwell has a question. She says, best resource for good quality agents and also, she hasn't had luck with Indeed, WizHire, Data Bank Monster, Craigslist. Well, Linda, um, one of the things that I do when I'm looking to hire, and I know um, a couple of our, our lab coat friends do the same thing here. When they put up an ad, they, it's a really specific ad. It's it's more along the lines of, look, this is this, this is us. This is what we're hiring for. And if you're interested, you need to do this specifically, right? So it gives them it gives them a set of things they need to do. And if they don't do that, if they don't obey those rules that you set forth on Craigslist or wherever you are, um, then you know what? They just kind of rule themselves out. So you don't even have to waste time with those. Like I, I put up a Craigslist as it says, hey, look, send me your resume and give me an intro and who you are. Email it to me and uh, send me your resume in Word doc or, or some type of doc. And all of a sudden, they just copy paste it into an email and they don't give me an intro. It's like, you know what? I'm not even going to look at your stuff. If you can't obey simple rules, right? Uh, well, how are they going to do on the team? Yes, exactly. Or as someone like an admin or an ISA, it's just, 
you have to have these set guidelines to follow. And that's how we've been able to get, look, Jacob, who most of you know is, is my main ISA. Jacob runs uh, my whole ISA department. And I found him on Craigslist. I put up an ad. I did exactly what I just told you. And he's been with me for six years, I think. Five or six years now. I'm terrible with years. But anyway, he's been with me for a long time. And that's how I hired him. I mean, the rest of the ISAs I got from you guys, which is nice. Uh, you just set up an interview and, and then I ask them specific questions. And if I fit with their personality or I like them and they do this or that, then I hire them. Um, but I mean, Nick, what have you noticed, man, when you're hiring, when you're putting out ads for agents and ads for, for uh, help? What am I noticing in terms of what, what they're, well, how they're responding to me? Yeah. How are they responding to you and are they quality? Um, I mean, it's interesting cause I, you know, I used a couple different sources. I used indeed and then I used Craigslist and we hired Kyle through Craigslist. I didn't really get, and I, what I know, what I notice is when I'm, when I'm putting ads up, uh, there are certain requirements that I that we need. Like I need the guy, I need licensed agents. Uh, I need someone who's licensed at least. And I get so many. Uh, and I need people who have experience with. Like when we hired Kyle, he's going to make phone calls for us. So I needed people who had experience with doing that. And so I find that we get a lot of people who aren't licensed and who don't have sales experience. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's not what I am asking for. So again, we're seeing people who aren't reading the, what is what is needed of them. So right off the bat, that's a red flag for me. the the first The first impression we get is your job application. That's the first impression we get. So yeah. just make sure make sure you follow the the guidelines. You know. All right. So that's what we're looking for then. And Pauline, so next step here. I'm gonna jump on that really quick. Right, um, sure. it, it's having a set expectation and if that expectation is verbalized and not met that's not a good fit all right, right? so then starting off with with the ad that you're putting out there it's got to mm -hmm. be it's got to be an ad that that says hey look these are my expectations and this is these are the steps you have to follow right so a lot of it has to do with what's on there right mm -hmm. sometimes you're not getting the right candidates because you're not putting out the right type of ad yep correct all right so step number one is ad then so then going from there, you get candidates, whether they're agents or staff, right? Mm -hmm. Coming in by email. And then what are you looking for? What are you looking for when, when you get these people? So you look at skill sets. Um, what have they previously done and how does it relate to the position that you put out for? Okay. Um, a lot of people immediately say, I need someone experienced in real estate because I don't want to have to show them what real estate is. A lot of things are transferable no matter what, what business you're in. Mm -hmm. And so taking a look specifically, again, going back to knowing what you want from this individual to do, a task list even is a good start. Um, you should know exactly what you want them to do and not look so much at who the previous employer was, but rather what did they do for that company? Okay. So their job duties. Correct. And do those job duties match what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. right. One of the things, one of the things that, that we do when we're hiring either agents or, or staff is depending on their position. For example, if I'm hiring an ISA, I'm bringing them in uh, after I've talked to them on the phone. Mm -hmm. So I need to talk to them on the phone, see if, if they have a good phone voice because and I'm hiring as an ISA, yeah. right? Uh, making sure they're pleasant. I don't want somebody who's crude or has a weird voice, weird tonality. Mm -hmm. I need someone who can communicate well with me over the phone. That should be your step number one. After you get everything ready with your ads and you're getting all of these inquiries, you want to make sure that you can connect with somebody over the phone. Same with an agent. I mean, if an agent comes in and, and they suck on the phone, I don't know if you want to hire them either. Right? <laughs> Correct. So that's an important step there is speaking to the person before you do an actual interview. 
Yep. Um, it saves you time because you could bring in 15 people. If you never heard what they sound like or even got any insight, once again, you're going back to, oh, they look really good on paper though. So Yeah. So then you got <laughs> now you've got inquiries. Then you did a phone interview. You know, you ask them a few questions, ask them what they like to do, spare time and, and so forth. You get to know them a little bit more than just asking the business questions. Mm -hmm. Then you bring them in for an appointment. At the appointment, I like to do a, a, a few different things. And I'm also going to touch on what you guys do, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, so when I bring in an ISA or or somebody that's for an admin position, I, I like to sit them down and I like to go over and explain to them what we're hiring them for. Look, here are the, your job duties. Okay. Do you see that you can actually accomplish these? Or, or do you have any challenges with some of those? I mean, the person we have right now, who's our operations manager, she she has surpassed everything that I've ever thought she would do, which is amazing. Uh, but we started with a sheet and we're like, look, can you do this? And she was truthful. She said, you know what? I can't do probably like a third of these because I, I came from a, the hotel industry. I don't know real estate very well, but I know how to do these and I'm really good with people. And I was looking at, look, I need for them to be really good with people and I need to, for them to have great character because mm -hmm. I can't teach somebody that has, that has a really bad character. I yeah. can't, can't teach. No. So one of the rules for hiring is, um, and, and people will be against this to some point, but you can teach anybody that's technology if they're not afraid of technology. So if you have someone who's staring at a computer going, ah, ah that's not going to be someone that's going to be trainable, right? Um, you yeah. can teach anybody, any system that's out there. It's all about training, working with them. And what's the other important part? You should know how to do it yourself so that you can teach them the way you like it done. Well, look, training is, is I think, a little further into the, the step yeah. process. Because right now we've got, you've got to create the right ad. Right, so you get the right responses. Correct. You got to do a phone interview with them, yeah. and then you have to bring them in, and then really analyze them. Um, but the next step after that would be the, the training part. Just right here, when you're interviewing them, we have a question: How much do you pay your admin? Do you hire part time or full time? When I first started, the first person I hired was a TC. She was kind of handling all our paperwork, and I was paying like two fifty a file. Um, this is for Patricia. And then I hired an admin way back when, and I was paying like $12 and it increased to 14, 15, 16, 17. And it just grew from there. But uh, I hired to start off part-time Patricia. And then I moved over to full-time because I wasn't in the position to hire uh, full-time. Uh, but when you're bringing in people like an ISA, you've got to do a great job on the interview. That's where you're going to find out if the person that you have there can handle it. So one of the things that we do with ISAs is, and I do this with my out desk when I'm interviewing your ISAs there, is I need for them to role play with me. Mm -hmm. I need to hear them out because if they're stuttering and not knowing what to say and they're supposedly already trained, right? Then you know I'm not I'm probably not going to be inclined to hire them. If they're new to real estate and they know nothing about it, I have I give them over a sheet that they can read. And we're mm -hmm. going to play it out. I'm looking for tonality and I'm looking for their voice being pleasant, them not getting aggravated. And I just want to make sure that they're, that they're good and solid with that. Um, the beautiful also, part about it. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to add what you said. So like, you know, if they're going to be on the phones, <clears throat> uh, you know, it, it's not, it's good to find out whether they, you know, they have a good phone voice. Like I've, you know, I know Jacob, your ISA has a very good phone voice. Um, you know, he speaks clearly He's got good inflection. Um, you know, we brought Kyle on. You know, Kyle is a very, you know, he has like a radio voice. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's just someone you want to talk to. So that's really important. If they're going to be on the phone, they got to sound approachable. They have to have a nice tone. Um, but, uh, yeah, I agree with, with, uh, with uh, yeah, with everything you just said just now. So All right. So, two, so then two things then. One is when we're – having an interview with an ISA, and it's been a while since I've interviewed an ISA in person, but one of the things we, we did, and with newer agents, so Linda, I know you had a question about newer agents or agents you're hiring onto the team. We give them a list of 20 people that they need to call. 
they're going to go in a room and that's part of the interview when they're coming in. Hey, do you have an hour? Because 30 minutes of that is you're going to sit down in a room and you're going to call a list of our people that we've never been able to reach. So here's the list. Here's the script. Call, get back to me. They're done in 30 minutes. They come out and they're like, and you're looking for if they're still engaged, if they still have that enthusiasm or if they're already defeated in their face. And it's like, oh yeah, that was, that was not fun. And you're in your head. You're like, yeah, well, this job isn't for you. <laughs> so yeah. that's a beautiful part because with my out desk, you line them up for us and I get to ask them questions. I'm like, Hey, look, how long have you been doing this? Are you familiar with this script? Great. You are, let me script with you. I'm an expired call me. Right. And that's how I've picked my ISAs. That's why I have Sandra with you guys for two and a half years. Almost. I love Sandra. Um, but it takes, it takes the right ISA or the right VA to, to match too. So once you're interviewing, make sure your interview process is tight and it's right, right down to as much information as you can, because if you screw it up, you're going to have to fire that person and then start all over. So that's, and that takes up so much time. I mean, you can see Nick nodding his head cause it's not fun. It's just not. No, uh, one particular story that I'm going to share here is I had someone goes, but she was so sweet. She came in. I just absolutely loved her personality. I, I could see myself hanging out with her and doing all of these things, but she really sucked as an ISA. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, it, we're human. We get into that mode, uh, you know, lead with the heart instead of the mind. But for the business, we really need to lead with the mind. The heart will follow later. Um, Ooh, that's a good quote, Pauline. I like that. You know, I was going to say to that point, a lot of people make the mistake of, oh, I hired that person because they're just like me. And like, <laughs> that's so true. If they're just like you, you're going to have someone who's still not getting it done because there are certain things that I can't do. If I hire someone who's just like me, they're not going to be able to do it either. So hiring people that are just like you are not it's the right. Not, that's correct. And that's why when I talk to people, I'm like, just be normal with me. Have a conversation. I'm going to ask you some open, honest questions. Answer it. Because I'm trying to figure out who you are as a person, what your personality is. And we're all trained internally to do that, of course. And, you know, they're like, so I need you to find someone just like me, Pauline. Just like me. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. But that's hiring two of you that you'll be in the same boat. Always hire someone who's going to compliment where you're lacking. That's why you um, evaluate your strength and your weakness. You're hiring for your weakness. Well, that's a great point. You're hiring. That's a good one. I love that. Hiring. For your weakness. All right. So let's say the interviews went well and I hired someone. I, I really like this person. And just a side note there, I don't do any of the hiring or the team because I like everyone and I say yes to everything. So I don't hire. My team leaders are the ones who hire. I say, hey, look, this person looks good. Can you interview them? I'm an operations manager there. My main ISA and my team leaders, they sit through it, they interview, and they're like, hey, this person's really good. And I stay out of it emotionally because I'd hire so many people that shouldn't be on the team. So if you're like me, um, maybe you should have someone else hire for you. And that's why I like my out test. You kind of scrub all of the crap out and you give us the good stuff. Well, no, and also flip side to that is a lot of the owners or the brokers will come to us and they'll do the hiring when in reality the virtual is working with their office manager and they're working for somebody else. You got to be mindful of that because if this person you're hiring is not working directly with you, mm -hmm. then you hired for yourself, not for your team. So whoever's going to be managing and being in touch with this person should be a part of the hiring process. Makes sense. All right. So I just downloaded, I just downloaded that. Uh, Me too. I'm looking role. at it right now. The job role checklists. So yeah, so, you uh, downloaded the job, job load, the job, the tasks, the task checklist here. Yeah. You're going to get a list of, um, let's see what you got. Marketing and admin, assistant, transaction cool. coordinator, 
transaction coordinator, listing coordinator, listing manager, and inside sales associate or ISAs, uh, which is a good list. Um, how'd you come up with this list, Colleen? Years and years of talking to agents. <laughs> okay. We want to make their lives easier and it's experience. Like every day is a learning process for us at MOD. And so we take what we learn. Everybody has failures and everybody has, you know, certain parts where they lack that skill set. We want to make sure that we give everyone as much help as possible. And this has really been the most helpful tool that we've deployed out there. Yeah, I love I, this tool. It helps everybody recognize what exactly this person should be doing in that role, which so, a lot of people have a hard time kind of handing and letting go. So, so would we, would we, or could we use this? Um, could we use this as a, as a tool to help us hire? Yes, right. definitely. Um, and then there's more, you know, when you get deeper into it, we put out blogs, we put out tons of stuff of content, um, what I always tell everyone is you're not going to cover everything on a piece of paper. Um, you know, and what we tell everyone is whether you choose us or somebody else, let's at least cut that time where you're making that mistake because at the end of the day, let's make sure you're operating your business optimally. Got it. All right. I love it. Any other downloads you have for us or that's it? Um, this one for now, and then we'll be adding more to lab coat agents over the next few weeks. Um, we're right. putting them together a bunch of stuff that'll help you guys. I love it. I love it. All right. Who who agreed with you here? John Pauly's on. He's saying, um, find your niche, become a nicheinator on your one thing. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. I love that. <laughs> John's I'm on. a nicheinator. <laughs> okay. No, I had to do it. I love it. All right. So, Pauline, now that I've hired somebody and and they're there, uh, I, I'm I'm not the greatest at training. I, I kind of just hire and then I expect you to perform on your own without any training. So, <laughs> yeah, show out. me what you got. Let's go. What What how are you going to do for me? Right. That's the typical attitude. Exactly. I mean, how do we implement a training process if we don't have my out desk? Because I know you guys provide the whole training, mm -hmm. the coaching for your for your ISAs, VAs, whatever, but Say I don't go with you guys. How do I how do I provide this training? Where do I get it from? Where do you get it from? So yeah. there's tons of coaching, there's tons of things online, but here's the dual purpose of these lists that I just handed over. It's kind of like a to-do list as well. Let me show them where XYC is. That's part of the training. Oh, you're gonna be doing this for me? Well, let me show you first how we do it, where everything is located and then what we expect at the end of each. So it's kind of like a checkbox. I've trained them on this, I've done this. You just keep going down that list. Once you've got them fully immersed, that's like full let go at that point. Got it, nice, I love it. There's All tons right. of books out there too that'll help you guys. Um, any, honestly, any books you recommend right now? I love the one thing, so it was kind of funny you showed that because you got to get good at your one thing, and it'll also help you recognize what this person is really good at. There's books about hiring virtual assistants. Um, there's culture training. Um, in real estate, what I've experienced myself is everybody has their own mindset, but not everyone shares the same mindset, right? Uh, it comes back to what are your expectations and really making sure to help this person be able to meet that and verbalizing things, writing things down. Um, feedback is huge during training because if it's not sinking into them, what good was that training? Yeah, very true. This is, this is a good book. I just had to get it from that. I started reading um, for teams and helps you the structure so that not everyone's doing the exact same thing. So everyone has a role in the team. It's, it's a pretty good book. It's called Great Team, 16 Things High-Performing Organizations Do Differently. So take a look at that one if you have a chance. So, yeah. so training, Pauline, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have a system where, where you train continually? Because yes. I feel like I don't talk to Sandra. Sandra's my uh, VA. Mm -hmm. I never talked to her and she does a great job. I mean, it's a perfect assistant to have or VA to have. Um, 
how do you guys do it? What do you guys do? What's the structure? So for us, it does continue on. We actually create um, what's called Mod University. Um, okay. And what it is, is it's an opportunity for them to sharpen their skills by continuing education or adding more skills because they're really good at this now, but how else can you sharpen that tool Got it. and make it shine? Um, we do good to great sessions. Um, our training team internally is constantly looking for feedback from our virtuals mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm really struggling with, you know, uh, handling objections. So they'll customize the training internally so everybody can join in so that all they're doing is objection handling training. Or oh. it, so, you know, it's, it's continuing. They do it about, I want to say once a month, if not every other two weeks or so. Um, and these it just your, depends. Your ISAs are doing these? Your mm -hmm. ISAs? Oh, yeah. that's pretty amazing. So what we do is we give them the opportunity. It's not a mandatory training, um, but it goes out to everyone and says, hey, you're invited to join us for this. Somebody may be really good at Excel sheets, but then Excel is one of those perfect examples like, oh, it's easy to put stuff in there, but how do you pivot and come up with this solution those are added training that you have to continue to take, whether you've yeah. been using Excel for like a year or five, right? So Continuing true. education. Um, they may be awesome and phenomenal. So capture that and go, how else can I elevate you to the next level? So then what I'm hearing right now is, is regardless of whether or not you choose you, uh, mm -hmm. my dad does, or you go on your own, you really need to have a continuing continuing education process, whether it's for your admin or your ISA. Correct. That's interesting. Look, like, like for my admin, I do do the whole um, continuing education. You know, we we sent her over to to learn more about admin duties, how to run the whole team, how to be more of an operations manager. So she's continually learning. But now that you mentioned it, you know, I didn't think about but my main ISA really, I'm not, I'm not really giving him more, more education. So I need to step that up. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Now I need to, I need to maybe challenge him a little bit more and, and teach him more. Things. And that's the thing you want so, to keep them challenged because engagement is important in that position. So you, you, you know, so on, on our team, uh, when someone joins in our in our uh, team agreement, we we will pay for a thousand dollars. Like other than what we teach, but we will pay for a thousand dollars of any other type of training they want to be involved in. Where they want to go to Mega Camp or family reunion, they want to take this online course, they want to go to this class. We'll pay for that up to a thousand dollars a year. But of course, every Tuesday and Thursday, we're always in the office as a team together, you know, talking about what we can be doing differently and so on and so forth. But uh, it's, yeah, that's super, super good point. Important. Yeah, that was good. I mean, for, for the team and for agents, it is important to continually take them to, to events where they can learn, whether it's the Tom Ferry event, the Buffini event, if we're at KW, you know, the KW Mega Camp or I actually internally tell them to attend your webinars. Oh, that's good. So well, that's reading. another tool that we tell everyone, hey, this is open for everyone. Jump in, join in. You know I do not disagree with that decision. That's a really yeah. good point. I'm gonna tell my whole team, hey, you have to listen to our webinars. Yeah, listen, it's mandatory. If you're on Tristan and Nick's team, you have to watch the lab co webinars, Kyle. That's right, Kyle. You can hear that? <laughs> Kyle's awesome. I already like Kyle. I don't even know him. <laughs> and now once that person attends that and nobody else had that chance to, they become empowered to bring back knowledge to the yeah. team. Plus you start creating habits with your, with your mm -hmm. agents that are on the team. They're creating a habit of always learning and always interacting with, with uh, people that are doing better or things mm -hmm. differently than they are. And I think that's important. Uh, Kyle's watching too. Nice. Oh, Paula's watching. Hey, Paula. <laughs> so yeah, Paula's on my team. That's awesome. That's so, oh, your team's like, I'm here. Don't fire me. Um, <laughs> no, Paula's doing great. So I think all your team, all your whole team just jumped on. Oh, gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll get everyone else on. Uh, so I think it's really important, the education piece yep. and the continual training. Look, I really didn't realize I was missing that piece until I just talked to you, which kind of sucks. good. That piece for my ISA. Mm-hmm. For the rest of the team, it's there. Uh, for my admin, it's there. Uh, but not for my ISA. So I'm trying to think where, where I could take. Guys, brainstorm here live. Where can I take Jacob or what can I do with Jacob, who's my main ISA, and help help train him more? Because I think that's really important. I need him to get better, even as good as he is. Any brainstorm here? Uh, does Jacob role play on a regular basis with other ISAs? Just with me. That's about it. Well, there we go. There's your first problem. Mm-hmm. Or, um, no, he should. Yeah, I mean, tr- thanks, Nick. No, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes he doesn't hear. Sometimes you don't hear the objections that he hears. Mm-hmm. But he's actually doing this all the time. So yeah, maybe he is. Maybe role playing with other ISAs who are coming across objections that you might not be coming across would be beneficial for him. <laughs> That's true. Any suggestions, Pauline? Um, yeah. So internally for us, we have good to great. YouTube has wonderful, wonderful resources. Type in oh. ISA training. Um, a lot of offices will do um, dial for dollars. Record that session and let them hear the feedback after those, you know, dial for dollars and say, oh, I came across – this objection, never heard it before, but wow, that's a new one. Well, how do you overcome that one? And, and record these so that they can go back to it when they have free time or when they feel they've had a hard day. Because let's be real, um, ISA is a very hard and grueling job. Like There are days job. where you get very deep down. Bring them back up by saying, that's fine. You know, tomorrow's a new day, but here's some new tools that will help you overcome those challenges in a different way. Um, I always tell everyone, YouTube's the greatest teacher out there. You know, it's visual. You can hear it, watch it. There's um, a lot of agents are turning into podcasts to kind of discuss their tips for, you know, um, increasing appointments. Just do a general search. There's plenty of options out there. I mean, obviously, if you had a virtual assistant through us, we have our own plan for training and so that that's one of the things yeah i do notice that that um sandra and jennifer get a lot of uh training which is nice um but i I didn't realize that i was leaving jacob out now i feel bad for jacob (laughs) oh wait listen you know what i don't feel bad for jacob because you buy him all sorts of toys you buy him drones you buy him cameras (laughs) well not everything but i do get him something Let's see. Paul is saying hi. Does Jacob ever have meetings with other ISAs to discuss what they're hearing? Good point, Paula. I like that. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna create a plan for for him to start doing that with other people. I love that. All right. So, Paula, anything you want to add? Yeah, for that one too. Your ISA, you should be listening to the call recordings. The call recordings of their phone calls out. Oh, okay. Got it. So we because- use. Yeah. So great point for our ISAs. We're using Ring Central. Mm-hmm. Ring Central. Well, look, whether it's my out desk or you have a virtual assistant mm-hmm. somewhere else, uh, it becomes easier using Ring Central. I know some some of you use Skype, but look, I've used Skype. I've used other other things. Ring Central just has the best quality it does. voice, and it records all the calls, so you can go through and say, "Hey, virtual assistant." Look, you you did really well here, but here you're struggling. So it, it, that's a really good, really good tool that we use just in mm-hmm. case other people. So don't. for us, what we ask for is give me three good phone calls and three um, really bad ones that you just feel were bad. And then you kind of listen to them and go, why do you think it was a bad call? It's a really good one. And then you kind of work on that at least once a month. You know, have them collect it and then put it aside, and that becomes one of the tasks. Like that way, you have something to cover during your training sessions with them. I like that. All right, so we've got ads. You know, write the right, write up the right ads. Mm-hmm. We've got interview over the phone. Correct. Bring them in, and you know, see what your expectations are. Make sure that they go through that. Mm-hmm. Then after you hire them, make sure you have the right training in place. 
right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So what if they suck? How do I fire them? Uh, that's the hardest part. I know, that's why I'm asking Pauline. Pauline, how do I fire these people? Wait. Outside of my out desk or <laughs> for no. I mean, Tristan, okay, let's sure. cover. Wait. Hold on, Nick's got something. Okay. Tristan, when you fire them, make sure you end it with a smiley face. I always do. I know. <laughs> Uh, that is the hardest part. We recently had to let someone go, and it was like one of the hardest things ever. I, luckily, it was mutual, but leading up to it, I was dreading it. You know, yeah, but, everybody uh, does. It, it's a hard yeah. thing to do when you have that emotional attachment, which develops when you're working well with someone. So, in my experience, um, we can go as corporate as make sure you're documenting um, mistakes or errors. You know, following the typical Document. process. Yep, document, document, document. Wait, what if you suck at documenting like I do? What do you do? You then? hire another admin who can document for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hiring all bunch of people to do everything that I suck at. I know. Hire someone to fire people. Mm. <laughs> Hold on. Nick, what if you fire my people and I fire yours? Oh, that's such a good idea. That is a good idea. <laughs> well, so here's the thing when you fire someone, um, Always start with the positives, right? Yeah. But then you know want coming. You, I hate that process. I hate when. Well, but they see, you're the giving them tools like, so that they don't repeat it on the next job. You're doing due diligence to make sure that I hey, they either get it or they don't, right? I just At that be like, point. hey Nick, you know, I really like you. You're doing a great job, but we're just not, you know, we're not seeing eye to eye. I just don't know if I like that process, Tristan. So, Listen, you're really good at what you do, but unfortunately, we have to let you go. And here's why. <laughs> Thanks. Linda says we're chickens. Yes, Linda, we suck at firing. Uh... And it all depends Thank on what the position on, is. This call. Sorry, I got to take this call. That's what you do afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, document everything, and it gives you an opportunity to kind of look internally as to why it failed. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, but here's the thing. Before you fire somebody, I honestly believe you have to step back and say, hold on. You got to evaluate things. Is it me or is it them? Correct. Because the because it may not even be them. So when yeah, we had your to let training our, sucked or your right. processes sucked. Yeah. When we had to let our first person go, there were like three or four separate occasions where I didn't do it at first. I said, okay, let's reevaluate. Let's reevaluate. Let's reevaluate. And it just turned out like, you know, after all of that, you know, it wasn't me, but I had to make sure it wasn't me, you know? Well, you know what? Actually, there was one time about a year and a half ago, we hired a second uh, virtual assistant from my out desk. And I realized that I didn't have the processes in place to, to hire them. So I had to let them go three months later, which sucked. Uh, but I realized that it was my fault. Mm -hmm. And I let them know that I rehired though very recently mm -hmm. um, a second one again, now that I had more of the processes in place, uh, which is nice. Uh, Christina Griffin saying, love my out desk. My VA Gracie has been with us three years. I like that. Love it. That's a long time there. She should uh, get with me and give me a success story. Yeah, I know. Uh, hit her up. Christina Griffin's awesome. All right. Rick Jensen is asking, so I've hired a licensed assistant as a buyer's rep. Okay. What's what's a standard commission split and do you suggest on the net or the gross? I mean, look, Rick, we're um if it's a buyer agent that you hired, we do we do 50-50, but you know, I, I have some some other real estate teams do 75 25 depends on how much you offer like the loken group nick what does the loken group do they they offer their agents 35 or 30 percent and they keep the rest because they have such a high uh high amount of leads and i don't know what you mean what their split is yeah i don't know what their split is honestly um the, the norm is though the norm we've seen is 50 50 it's the easiest to remember and it seems to be of the a good place to start if you don't have uh, if you don't have a lot of things in place. Pauline, what have you seen? It varies. It just really comes down to what 
did you lay out at the initial conversation? Because that could have been a deciding factor for this person to join your team or not. And so you got to stick true to that. Um, for us internally, it's a little bit different because we're not licensed. And so oh. our processes for those is a little bit. So for, for you guys, how much am I paying uh, uh, an hour for a VA? For a full time, it'll be a little over $10 an hour. All right. And you so guys only do full time now, right? No more. That's part-time? it. No more part time. So right. full time. So what's, what's the reasoning behind that? Just so I know. So what we've learned um, as recent as like I would say the last three years is if you need help, you typically need someone at full time to get the results that you want. People tend to hire for the moment, not the end goal. So for an ISA, this is a perfect example. Do you want um, to get there in three months or do you want to get there in six months? When you hire part time, they only have such a small window to call versus someone full time calling. So that shortens that wait time for you to see conversions. Okay. So you're saying it's going to benefit you overall. Yes. Right. Got it. All right. That, that makes a lot of sense. Then uh, somebody just added a link here to our Facebook, to one of our Facebook lives. It's a good book. Oh, John Polly did it. A good book is called the virtual assistant solution. Come up for air, offload the work you hate and focus on what you do best. Mm-hmm. Um, that's cool. I had never heard of it. I'm going to take a look at it. It's only two ninety nine on Kindle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it before. So, that looks cool. Uh, Rick Jensen added, so if he brings a listing, would you still do 50-50? I'm paying all expenses. Uh, Rick, I might, if you're paying all expenses, you know, I, I probably switch you 60, then 40, because you're putting up everything. If you're doing a drone, if you're doing uh, photography, if you're doing all the marketing you do, you know, that, that's a lot. Plus, you're running the risk of it not selling. So you're upfronting all that money. So, I mean, you could do 50-50, but i probably lean more towards 60-40 you. That's probably what I would do. Uh, Nick, anything you want to add, bud, before we close out? And then uh, we'll touch on their downloads one more time. Uh, no, man. I think we covered a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I learned it was a lot. It was concise, good, to the point. Pauline, anything you want to add? Because I, I like the process that you created here for us. It was really oh. nice. Cool. Thank you. Um, no, if you guys want um, a consultation, um, our consultations are, you know, it's just focusing more on the individual, customizing their needs, giving them a roadmap. You don't have to take our services. Do we get anything for free? Um, <laughs> nothing is ever truly free. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not so download or anything. The downloads are free and the consultation is free and no cost and no obligation. The webinar is free. The yeah. webinar is free. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. I was just, I was just joking. Um, just a reminder for everyone, all lab coat agents um, receives $100 off their setup fee if they do decide to move forward with it. There's $100 that you get for free. There you go. Woo. I'm, just, I'm just pointing out all the free stuff. But look, we're not, by the way, and then, this is not a sponsored webinar either. We don't get, we're not. No, you guys anything. know, we to, yeah, that is actually 100% true. This webinar is not a paid webinar. We are doing this because you guys need to know how to hire people. Exactly. Yep. yep. And because we've tested out my out desk for a few years now. It's not like, true. yep. So thank you, everyone. Then, Pauline, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Pauline works for my out desk. And if you're interested, the links are, are here in the webinar chat. and by the way if you guys also are seeing our what after you know after our webinars air and we upload them and they're all nicely edited with the intros and the outros and like the uh the uh, subtitles you know for facebook and all of our images that we post up to announce new webinars my outdesk is doing all of that stuff for us they also do cool stuff like that too yeah that's very true thanks dude i totally forgot about that yeah all yeah, of our stuff sure. All of our edited videos, all of our graphics, everything, my our my outdesk virtual assistant does that. They yeah. do everything for us. So thank you. We got some new videos coming out. Tristan and I were doing videos last week in LA when we released those out. You know, my outdesk edit them all up all nice. They're gonna look great. So they also do lots of marketing for you. Yep. Very true. Thanks, Nick. All right. Thanks, Pauline. Thank thanks, you guys. Thanks, bro. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.
All right. Bye. Bye.